Welcome to Aging with Attitude with Susan and Anthony. And today, uh, I hope you had a great Matariki first. There you are on the screen right now. <laughs> Thank you. We do have a special guest uh, today, and I think she's a star. Um, yep, absolutely. World champion? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your Bali trip first. Uh, so I went over there to represent uh, Aotearoa New Zealand in uh, kickboxing MMA from Undisputed here in Masterton. Yeah. And a gold medal. And you got and a gold a medal. Silver. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. What was it like in that experience um, going away? Beautiful. Beautiful yeah. eye opener to how. <clears throat> how uh, how good we've got it here in New Zealand as well, but beautiful. Okay. It was nice. Okay. So since you told people what you do for a hobby, huh? <laughs> it might be nice to tell them your name now uh, and I'm what you do. Michelle Ihaka, and uh, I'm coordinator of Wadarapa Rape and, Sex uh, Wadarapa Rape and Sexual Abuse yep. and have been for 20 years. It's a long time. Mm. You must really enjoy your job. I do enjoy it. I get okay. to see the other side and help people through uh, what what is a crisis in their their life at the time, and I get to be a part of them transitioning from a really hurtful, ugly side um, to to seeing them get confidence and um, come out the other side of it. Yeah. Okay, so just tell us a little bit about um, the organisation itself. So the organisation was uh, made from uh, by women for women originally back in um, eighty five here in Wadarapa. Uh We were a branch off, well, not a branch off. It was a women's movement back then. You had women's refuge, and then you had uh, so rape and sexual abuse um, was created also along those lines out of feminism as well and a need for for women. Um, the focus was uh, is for um, you know aiming to end all sexual violence, uh, but it's an open door for anybody who has uh, either directly or indirectly been a part of or affected of rape and sexual abuse. Um, yeah, within our community. Okay, so I understand a bit about the directly, but what about the indirectly? What does that look like? So the indirectly is Fano. Uh, friends, anybody who, who is so, we're not a ripple <coughs> effect. Is we throw a pebble into a river, and that pebble can be the incident at hand, um, and then we have all the ripples on the outside, and and those can also uh, reflect the indirectly of it affects everybody who's part of that one person. So, mm. so what kind of programs then, like for the indirect, you'll find and stuff. What kind of programs do you run? So uh, I provide a wraparound service. So offering advice on how to best um, deal or work with with uh, people who have been affected, and and there are those who who it's also affected in a different way. So I work with people how how to get through emotions and feelings around those things to best deal with it themselves, um, recognise it, but have healthy conversations around it is probably the main thing. Mm. No <laughs> sweeping under the carpet and, and helping extract those feelings and emotions around it rather than suppressing them and having, like I said, those safe conversations around it um, because that's what needs to happen and getting to the root of things. Mm. Mm. I heard um, from another guest speaker a, a while ago now that for every person who is affected they are they in turn uh, have impact on about 11 other people mm. yeah in in their own little community <clears throat> yeah so that's quite a lot of people when you count them all up you know it is a lot of people but also it, it can be effective depending on the support networks mm -hmm. um our logo that we have, um, which you will see, actually represents that journey of one's healing process okay. and the important part within in that logo as well is the supporting people around that. So um, if, if there are the right supports and the right understanding of it and the right education within those other supports, it, it, it's just like whānau, you know, and, and um, it it can take a lot of people for that healing rather than the one, but it's the mm. importance of the education that's the most number one key mm. of how it is dealt with properly. So you're saying that there's a logo in this bag? Oh, yes, yes, that I created. <laughs> that yeah. you created? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so would you like to show it to the camera? Oh, here we go. Yes, there we go. You can show that to the camera. And then explain mm. it. Yeah. Oh, this one here, Susie. Oh. This one here. Now it's moving around. Now it's moving oh, around. Yeah. If you speak, I think it'll... All it, right. The camera so, um, 
so over here the bottom of it is is kind of like that the person who is um entering our service here oh, down the bottom. like starts to see yeah yeah and then over to the um left hand side is them uh represents our side the left hand side represents our side and our input into that and if you see it's a lot thinner and um yes we we're, we're an important role but however the right side <coughs> is that person's growth and their supports as they um engage more and they get get um, open up a bit more, how that gets thicker, but also the supports, how they are really important and wrap around that person. And then in the end, they create that growth to be able to come back out and- Oh, that's beautiful. And yeah, and so be cool. themselves, find themselves again. So yeah, that's what that represents. Oh, and it's important and it's that heart. it told a story. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. I love that. That's so gorgeous. So is that logo only for the Wairarapa or is it for as in a national logo? No, that's our own logo here that okay. we created. We used to be part of National uh, Collective of National uh, Rape Crisis. That's unfortunately sort of um, fallen off the wagon a little bit as the years have gone. Um, mm. And there was a logo for that. But because we're also independent, we uh, can create our own. So, yeah. yeah. No, the only reason why I asked is because um, Yellow Brick Road, the name for Yellow Brick Road, I can't remember, there's Buoho Waho or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but their name was gifted by uh, Mike Kawana to the oh, service. Yes. <coughs> and now that name is um, recognised and implemented to other Yellow Brick Road uh, around New Zealand. Oh. That's why I, I asked that mm. question. Hmm. So, yeah, unfortunately, the se well, the sector throughout New Zealand is really little, considering um, there's only a number of us. I think there's 13. I could be wrong here. There's probably a bit more throughout New Zealand. Our sector is very little, so it's important. That's why we try to bridge together. But we're not um, one collective. Uh, we're not. We don't have franchises throughout New Zealand, mm, so yeah. we all try to keep together because we're so little. But we make big impacts. Yeah, it's interesting that the um, the organisation or the um, agencies is it not many around New Zealand. When I'm guessing. It's a, a, a quite a big problem, sexual abuse or sexual violence. Yeah, it, it is a big problem. Um, unless you're working in it, you probably don't <coughs> understand how big the problem is. Um, it is big, and it's too big, and it's always too big. Any mm. any sexual abuse ongoing is too big, and um, and even in our hometown, it's mm. it's big here. Mm. Um, it's big throughout New Zealand. Um, mm. yeah. yeah, I'm like guessing. Oh, sorry, like, you go. Yeah, like a lot of um, if that side of family violence, when something like this might happen, it's um, underreported as well, isn't it? Yeah. Or um, I guess a lot of your role is around educating people to talk about it mm -hmm. and to to um, yeah try and reach out for help because I think it, it's um, you know something could have happened like ten or fifteen years ago and people just like they just build a barrier around it, don't they? And yeah. and then something might come up later on. They might be supporting someone else in the same situation and then. You know, it sort of um, brings up a lot of inner feelings and mm. things that really need to be, um, yeah, supported by your yeah. organisation, really. <clears throat> yeah. So it's um, probably a lot more historical come through. So historical is when something has happened in the past of a sexual nature and um, then people want to come forward. Also, though, <laughs> a lot of DV, it comes unreported, people... Mm. Um, and it's, sometimes it's how the brain works as well, can only deal with, with one traumatic event, let alone two. Yeah. It's always, I, I say always, majority of the time, the sexual um, violence component that is, is uh, left buried um, for a certain time. Mm. And that's natural as well when, when there are two components mm. that are sort of getting, um, you know, uncovered. So, um, yes, I was... I forgot what I was going to say about that. It's, it's right. okay. <laughs> it's Monday. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah. It will come back. What I um, am interested in is we talk about sexual violence, right? Mm -hmm. So if I just use the name wide up a rape crisis, mm -hmm. well, my mind is only thinking about rape. And so would you be able to 
elaborate on what sexual violence actually means. Yes. So also our, our full legal name, and I'm always correcting people mm. on this, we are wadded up a rape and sexual abuse. Cool. Um, there's a reason for that, because mm. as you said, if um, people call us wadded up a rape crisis, people automatically, there's a stigma that, mm. oh, I, I wasn't raped, so why should I contact that service? That mm. service isn't for me, That's I right. wasn't raped. So I always correct people where mm. rape and sexual abuse, because then people mm. understand that actually, um, depending on, on what, what the incident was, if mm. they were sexual abuse, uh, if there was sexual abuse or not. Um, just going on our name as well, um, over the years, plenty of people said, oh, that's a bit confronting. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. And people are like, oh, what about the word rape? And, and what, mm. have you thought about changing your name? No, I haven't. Why are we sugarcoating this? And that's one thing I take mm. a stance on is I will not sugarcoat it mm. because what are we teaching people? Mm. Um, just like when we talk about body parts and skulls, penises are penises, vaginas are vaginas, <laughs> and people are like, oh, but we have to, especially when it's we're talking about sexual abuse. Remember stuff. what it is. Mm. Remember what it is. So, sorry, your question was when you come to our. our no, my question was yeah. could you define what sexual violence looks like? Because a lot might just think it's just rape. Right. Got you. Uh, so mm. sexual violence is anything that um, when it is non-consenting or somebody has felt like that consent has been forced or pressured. So anything sexual that somebody does not want to happen to their mm. body, um, someone who, and if they feel like they've been pressured or coerced into something sexually happening to one's body, whether it's touching, looking, forcing to look at things mm. as well, because there's mm. sexual violations. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so as we know, there's um, pornography out there, things like that, if people are forced to watch those things um, or forced to do things to other people mm. as a form of sexual violence as well. So people, um, a lot of people see black and white, Rape is rape is a penis into a vagina. That's um, the legal definition. However, now the legal terms, there is a whole umbrella of what fits under rape yep. as well. Um, and then we have our sexual violations, which is anything other than um, that, though uh, mm. the penis into the <coughs> vagina, which is very serious, obviously, mm. just as serious as um, if, if we look in the legal definitions and the crimes, that they, they are all on par and they're very serious because of those effects that they have on people. Mm. You know, I'm really interested in the mm. non-contact stuff. Right. Yeah, because <coughs> it's still sexual violence and the intent... Yes. Is perverted. Yes. Yeah. And so, and a lot of times, um, I just, people could say, I was just looking. No, no, but that's still a violation of. Yes. And so in terms of, because I was thinking more of, um, as you know, we were with elder abuse and, mm -hmm. and age concern. And so um, a carer could come in and just watch. Mm. But the intent is not to help. The mm -hmm. intent is to abuse oneself. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to, you to clarify that for us. Yes. So yeah. that, that also is a big no-no and it's illegal as well. And um, unfortunately, you know, I have heard those stories before. Mm. And, and it's about, um, that's right, the intent. And if there is a carer and... Um, and as we know, an elderly, we, it's also like children sometimes yeah, can't verbalise. Exactly. Or, and or it's those not. feelings. So mm -hmm. um, it's about... If people can know about those feelings, if they feel like something's not right and about being believed and listened to, our older ones being heard and listened to because mm. I think they're overridden too fast, like, oh, they're just old, just like, yeah. you know, and don't understand about actually I don't feel comfortable with that person because we have dealt with those things mm. and that there also, um, you know, is an invasion of somebody's privacy in their mm. body as well um, because that there is also illegal and not okay about somebody watching for their own gratification mm. or or for washing washing and then oh there's a slip of a hand or mm. things like that and inappropriately because as we know there is a difference mm. yeah. um, so those sorts of things as well does yeah. that answer your question well it helps broaden because yeah. I want the um, the listeners to understand that it's just not one thing it's many things and it doesn't have to involve touching yes yeah it can be observing because at the end of the day in terms of i uh, say a person's rights under the health and disabilities act the first one is respect and mm. dignity yes and so 
yeah. and very vulnerable. Our, yeah. our elderly are very vulnerable. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and don't like to say something, don't like to make a fuss or... Yes. Um, yeah. I'm going to... Yes, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And, and oh, bless working yeah. with older people. Yes. They're like, I don't want to bother you and yeah. I don't want to waste your time. Mm. And that's right. And it's mm. that they encouragement. They talk it down, eh? They mm. do. And we've had a lot of cases, um, whether it's reported to the police or not, because I deal with both. Mm. Um, and it just, it's, it's sad because they feel like I'm wasting time and it's not. And if there are people around, uh, all those caregivers, it's about to encourage mm. those those um, conversations, but also to make somebody feel safe because that's the biggest thing is what I hear from if I'm working with elderly is I don't want to waste time and, oh, you know, and mm. you've got better things. So, mm -mm, you're just as important as the younger person yeah. I'm working with, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. So um, that's right. And, and but the touching, the... Um, I was going to say peeping, but but that, and, mm. and it's about if somebody's feeling uncomfortable, we need to listen to that. Mm -hmm. If um, and I, I and we compare back to our our young ones and our elderly, same sort of minds as as we've got to listen about if they like, I I don't feel comfortable with that person, or they they touch me and I didn't like mm. it because it's too brushed off. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know, if somebody's saying that, we've got to listen to that. Yeah. Yeah, something's happened. Mm. Yeah, and it could be nothing, but if we don't investigate, that's right. Mm. And if it's a caregiver, and they, and it's um, something that they, that's not, not, um, um, are, are to have a reaction for, um, they need to be advised that they need to show respect or ask, are they okay with me washing you? Or, I mean, I, I guess um, you know when you're dealing with um, people all day, you sort of forget that they're a person, and yes. you need to make sure that every person that you see that day, um, if you're caring for anyone really, mm. um, is someone that you keep reminding yourself, you know, how are they feeling today? Yeah, is it okay? Human, yeah, they're, they're not just a tick. <clears throat> um, and the other thing is sometimes um, people feel guilty because I don't want to get that person in trouble mm, because yeah. they're good at in all these other ways and they they're good at getting my groceries or they're good at helping mm. me and they're good listener. But yeah. so I don't want to talk about it because oh, I don't want to get them in trouble. So yeah. it's encouraging those conversations. Mm. about mm. actually it's not okay if, if you know something you're feeling uncomfortable or something because that's another thing that mm. people do as well is they don't want to get someone in trouble and they don't want to lose their yes. their help in the home yes. or um and you know. it's all those factors as well you know we look at all the factors of what's going on in our in our backyard with mm. finances and things like that and mm. that's a good point as well mm. like um the worry our our elder our elderly worry right yep. big warriors a mm. lot of them and worry about but what if I don't get another caregiver mm. who's going to look after me mm. and things like that. So it's and a, they're quite isolated. Yes. Quite often family's not around. Yes, or, yes. You know. family, our family, we need yeah. to be more responsible for our elders. Yeah. I cannot say that enough. I'm sure you've had plenty of those conversations. <laughs> yeah. Because that's right. That's also a big thing mm. as well as um, isolation. Responsibility. Yeah. Isolation. Because that's what makes them vulnerable, isn't it? It's yes. the same with children, really, yes. isn't it? I always... Being left with people yeah. that we do not trust. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we exactly. We children. <laughs> <laughs> so children and elderly, we can absolutely put on par together yep. because it's it gets to the point with um, elderly, you know, can't verbalise or mm. don't or don't want to be a pain. And, mm. and same thing, would we leave our children with these people? Would yeah. we listen to our babies saying this? Yeah. Um, then why not with our elderly as mm. well? Yep. And um, yeah, very frustrating when when you hear of um, you know our elders, our elderly just left over there, mm. let someone else look after them, it's not fair, and things like this happen, and then it's not heard and not listened to. Mm. Um, yeah. The other part of that too is that, um, yes, there is instances where um, caregivers do violate the, the old person, but a lot of the times too, most of the violation uh, is done by family members. Yes. Okay, so um, they need to be put in the mix as well. Yes. Yeah, and then what is the mindset of the older person if the person who is violating um, the perpetrator is a son or a daughter? Yes. You know, how might that impact on their well-being, mental well-being? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So do you have many of yes, those stories? Yes, unfortunately, yeah. yes. Um, and, and, and I'll use the word offenders because mm. um, when somebody does that, that's exactly what they're doing. Um <clears throat> 
unfortunately the bigger number of, of offenders on, on people are known are either family members or are known to that person. Mm. Um, and once again as well, people feel shamed or embarrassed, one, that it is a family member, but also not wanting to get them in trouble mm. because people take sides. Mm. So I work with people through that as well. It does not mean police need to be involved. I make that very, very clear because um, some people feel like, oh, but if I talk about this, police have to be involved. I don't want to go to police for a whole number of reasons, and that's fine. Mm. It's about... Um, having having their own informed decision, but mm. making that decision for themselves around the incident, not others. So I, I work quite well, uh, well uh, around that about getting people to make their own informed decision mm. for them, not mm. anyone else. Because usually, people, we, we're all human. We worry about what others are going to think, how mm. it's going to mm. impact mm. others. So um, it's about removing those layers and for them to feel safe about, hold on, well, well this is about you. Um, so once again, it's about supporting those ones of, of speaking through. And as I said, it's quite important as well, is that police do not always have to be involved. Um, people do take that path and, and that for their own reasons, and which is... Uh, also an okay path and I support through that um, but also people don't have police involved and sometimes people want to keep it um, within themselves sometimes keep it within whānau and family and deal with it that way and it can be dealt with that way depending mm. on um, certain situations and things like that I, mm. I work very um, I am very uh, survivor slash victim focused and driven that's how our organization work and i i very much put put it back to them and make sure that it is driven within reason because mm. um, that's really really important of giving that control back yeah um so go on to big discussions about about the impacts and once again it, it depends on what the incident was who the incident was from mm. um yeah because there's always layers yeah Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you get people um, ringing up for advice um, if the, yes. the, the, um, the victim doesn't want to make any? Yes. Because <laughs> we, we get a bit of that in, yeah. our, in our role. And, um, you know, the big thing for us is gaining consent because it's, yes. you don't want to be working on the back foot <laughs> with know. someone. You want, to, want them to actually yeah. um, invite you in. Yes. Um, how do you deal with that? So just going on, I probably should have um, mentioned that our service is free and confidential. <laughs> as yep. well and we have an 0800 number directly for the wairarapa so that's really handy obviously that's for people um so we're easy to reach uh so yes i have a lot of people ringing um and saying this happened how can i make them come to you can i make an appointment for them and i'm like yeah. no unless you have their consent because a lot of people we want to help people but we need mm. that person needs to that because mm. the first thing people do is like oh my god this thing's happened you need help and yes. they instantly take away the focus from what has happened to that mm. person and they are reflecting their own feelings like mm. oh my god i am shocked mm. about this yeah. you need help because <laughs> oh my god i've just heard this and i i realize how it's affecting me instantly it takes away from that person yep. it's about putting back onto them so i usually give advice when i do yep. get those calls mm. advice one how to support them through that for if they would like to come to our service I fully what might that look like so I would explain to them what our services um, and uh, pretty much how I, I do a meet and greet first that they don't have to a lot of people are really scared that mm. they have to come and tell their story to me mm. I'm not interested in that not straight away anyway a little bit but it's built, building that relationship what's that hand for you what what's triggered that off what can I help with what are the feelings and the emotions around it mm what what happened isn't relevant right at that start it's around those things so I talk around that how um, I have ongoing sessions and then also options what is best for that person what is it that they want yeah you know that's the big thing isn't it yeah what, what, what is do you it want? that they want mm. what is it that they want sometimes they just want someone to talk to mm. sometimes I want that person held accountable what does that look like is mm. it through the law or mm. is it through whanau mm. you know is it through you writing a letter so so it's about uh, fully explaining about what our service does and if someone's ringing up on behalf of and they need help <laughs> they'll decide that I'm like no no they need to want that support themselves mm. it's, um, and some people don't but um, people are always very grateful to get that advice because this is not what people talk about people don't talk about it until it's on their front door 
and that's okay we want to make sure that we are there and easy accessible for if that comes up someone they know how to utilize our service and find it um, because yeah people don't talk about it mm. yeah mm. so uh, um, could you just do one thing for me mm -hmm. Read out your 0800 number for us, please. Oh, yes, 0800 614 614. Um, so, yeah, that's free calling. 0800 614 614. So, yep, and it'll come straight to the Wairarapa Centre and not go anywhere else. No, it's no, not a call centre. Yeah. <laughs> it's straight to us, to us. We've also got a website that I've just got up yeah. and running last year. I had a look at it. It Didn't looks really it? nice. It's nice to know. It's, it's always, nice it's and, um, get, yeah. Get feedback I, on it. It's nice and... Um, I don't know, it's nice and slow, not loud, it, it's got lovely picture, you know, illustration, you know, and it's, yeah, it's very smooth looking, mm. I, I really enjoyed That's looking at it. That's good to get feedback yeah, on that. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Some um, websites are like, whoa, I know, too, much too much writing, much yeah, too much information, yeah, and yeah. it looked really lovely. Oh, mm. that's good to hear. Yeah. Mm. The other one, um, point I would like to ask you is that, mm -hmm. um, and this is gender, Yes. Related, okay, because uh, from my perspective, anyway, um, the amount of males that are being sexually um, abused or mm -hmm. violated is increasing as well. Yes, and so a lot yes. of males will go unarmed too too much for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when then inside they are not well at all. Yes. Not well 100% at all. agree. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, what would some of the advice you would have for those male um, victims? Um, that it's okay to talk about it, but it, it takes time. Um, so, I've worked with quite a few men over the years mm. um, from different, obviously, ages um, and ranges. Um, and the effects on it is, um, and you would know this as well from mm. your past um, career, yeah. um, is very, very, uh, what is the word, led into gangs, jails, DV, things like that. It's mm -hmm. um, very, it turns into a lot of aggression. It's really mm. sad to see. Yeah. Um, but I get it as well. Um, so my advice is that it's okay to talk about it. It's okay. I've had some pretty hard and tough men as well. Mm. Um, and that it's it's about that it's a safe space to talk about as well. The biggest thing with with and I'll speak for myself of, of having sons as well. Males don't usually get in tune too much with their feelings and emotions. Hard, it's hard work, right? Um, and that's that's the biggest step is that is acknowledging and that um, it's okay to talk about it as well because it's um, yeah those outcomes that we see or that I have seen with men. Um, you know, the massive impacts, math, mm. massive impacts, because also those supports aren't in place. But also it takes a, a different effect on males mm. about, am I gay? Am I this? Am I, but I'm not this. And, mm. But also that mas masculinity. Yeah. Um, so once again, it's about talking through. I'm very pro-education. I'm very, very pro about putting in, when I say education, obviously teaching, teaching about it's okay to talk about this and, and things like this aren't okay, to try to, I guess, normalise those conversations as well because we have a um, majority of, of males I work with, um, the offending happened when they were children. Mm. Um, or young men mm. and um, and they take impacts right through so it's about having those conversations um, and also reminding um, people I work with is that you know they were a child at this time and there were reasons because they a, a lot of the time it's a mentality but why don't I do that why don't I smash them why don't I why don't I fight back why don't, mm. you were a child mm. <laughs> you know we go back into that child mm. mind so yeah. understand or why that. did I why why did this have to happen to me? Yes. Yeah, what did I do wrong? Yes. And I, I yeah. do a lot of work on that as well about yeah. you did nothing mm. about when an offender mm. um, wants to do something. They, there's one, one mm. site. In there's there. a lot of grooming goes in. A lot of grooming. There? And it's and what trusting. trade it's Fano and, mm. um, you know, a, a lot of grooming goes in. And it's, um, yeah, and it's horrible. It's, mm. it's really horrible for for everyone who's involved with it. Mm. Um, and, you know, 
and we have cases um, we see on the news it's not really reported here a lot of our cases aren't reported um, that's fine uh, but we're we're historical offending and then they go through jail and mm. it's like well a bit of karma of and it still happens now of that person might have been an older male who or or, or woman woman offend as well May, mm. I'll make that yeah. very clear this is mm. not just about male offenders there are women offenders female offenders mm. and that numbers yes it's minimal but it is there and that's a problem as well um so I lost my track now where I was going I just wanted to make it clear about not not all offenders are men yeah um uh yeah but education mm. talking mm. about it that's the biggest I'm glad thing. you said that um all offenders are there are female offenders mm -hmm. because um, there is that mindset nah especially if it was a male who was the victim mm. it was whatever mm -hmm. that can't happen whatever I know absolutely mm. and what happens with ex uh, our body response to touch a lot of people are like how can a male get raped and how mm. did you know that happen and it's about our body's response to touch even if our minds are mm. saying i don't like this i don't want this mm. um yes and absolutely there are female offenders and um and it's not okay mm. and and hence you know i'm a big advocate to talk about this i will have a conversation anytime about this <laughs> um because we need to have those conversations mm. of people understanding what is okay and what isn't okay because as you said rape isn't just um you know the we've got to debunk myths you know it's not not the stranger who pulls you into alleyway yeah, and absolutely. rips your clothes off and yeah. you're covered in mm. in um scratches and bruises mm. and things mm. like that that is not that and it is not the dirty old man hiding in the alleyway no. it is our family members it is our people close to us it is um all ages and stages it is wealthy people it is poor people it is mm. people of all different cultures um there is no face of an offender for rape and sexual abuse mm. and and it and it doesn't pick who the victims are either they're mm. across the board and that's a, a it's a big thing um and people i i still work with people today who those myths are just in there there's an ignorance to rape and sexual abuse mm. still out there and i i, mm. I like to get in there and out, have those uncomfortable conversations and um because they have to be done yeah, well, we need to debunk it because mm. if we don't then it will always be there Yes. It will always be in the shadows. Mm. And that's yeah. what we don't want. And that's what we don't want. We, yeah. What happens is then we see generations of, um, mm. of it happening throughout generations because it's too hard. It's too hard to talk about. Um, we, I have ads on our radio station and, and this was like, ah, oh, very heartwarming. Uh, we just sort of done our ads and I remember I, I got a, and it's just, um, you know, talking about rape and sexual abuse and we have little, little lines and, you know, yep. it's not okay. And then our number and, um, the phone rang and it was a very, very elderly man. I could tell he was very elderly and he'd rung. He just wanted to thank me. He said, I just want to thank you so much for, for your service. He said, you know, back in my day, he said, this was not spoken about and it was it was brushed mm. in on the carpet. He said it so needs to be spoken about. And he couldn't thank me enough. And mm. he just rung to fully say that. And he said it, it needs to be spoken about. People don't think it's speak about these things. And the other thing, just talking about elderly, um, that's exactly what I hear. I tried to tell someone and I wasn't believed. Mm. I tried to tell someone I was told not to talk about it. Mm. And I get that a lot with historical cases of elderly who come through, mm. who... who um, they told and they weren't listened to or they weren't believed or they were um, told to not talk about it um, one because of living situations mm. if you talk about it we mm. might lose our home yeah we can't do that or we'll lose our family things like that and just not fear and that their children have mm. lived through their lives mm. um, so also I like to think with us um, you know, doing our advertising, I call it like silent advertising, we have bands and we have pens and things like that that get out there, um, is that people know that no matter what your age is, you can always come forward. You mm. can always get support. Because also sometimes people think, oh, well, it happened to me years ago. You know, there's mm. probably nothing you can help me with. I get that quite often as well. Yeah. Is, um, oh, it happened mm. so many years ago, you know, I probably shouldn't be letting it bother me. And absolutely, yes, you should. You know, mm. you've got a, every right as yeah. um, anybody who walks in my door. So um, that's a, a really big thing. And sad to hear when I told and I wasn't um, heard. Yeah. 
or that I was told I wasn't allowed to say anything. And mm. it's that, mm. that story of being swept under the carpet mm. yeah. Yeah, all too often. And, yeah. and you know, like um, I suppose in those generations, that was it, hey, don't talk about it, it'll break up the family, it's embarrassing, um, we'll just, you know, close our mm. eyes and ears and life goes on and it does go on for everyone else. But a lot of people know that you know, underlying these things have happened. Yes. And disclosure, as you say, if you make a disclosure and someone just wipes you off, you're thinking, actually, no one's going to listen to me. And then you don't disclose again until someone, until you're in the right space and someone says, are you okay? Mm. Or, um, you know. Until someone's had to live with yeah. it for all their life. Mm. And it's created usually these paths mm. that they've gone down and had massive impacts. And that's also a big reason why, um, about when a disclosure is made, about it taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's very important how a disclosure is dealt with because it has, it will have life-lasting life effects on, on how, what that person does next. It's either gonna close them down. Um, what, I, what I continue to see, which is sad, but it's reality, if, if those stories of when it was swept under the carpet, we'll use that as the phase, mm. is that ongoing offending happens through generations. Yep. And then sometimes mm. my grandchild got offended against and if I, and then that guilt and shame is put back on them because yeah. if only I had told, but usually, you know, whether they told or not, mm. if only I told, this is my fault because now my, my grandchild's been offended against or my sister and things like that. And it's about helping remove that mm. guilt and shame. But also though, um, you know, there, there are, reasons where people have been told to shut up and you've got to sometimes put that back on those people about mm. well you know you were told and for whatever reason depending on situations mm. so because it always depends on that but and this is why it's really ugly mm. because there are layers and layers and mm. layers and those effects that it continues mm. to have on people and that's why we just want to come back down to how do we stomp it out Still don't know those answers. Educating young people? But educating young people. Mm. So I've gone to the schools, mm. um, educate as well about consent, about what is rape and sexual abuse, what are sexual violations. Rape is not only that, but there are sexual violations as mm. well. Um, images, photos, that as well, um, getting shared around. It's such a worry, isn't it? Um, it's around massive. social media and stuff like that because people think it's okay, but it's really, it's a terrible platform it's, you know for people to shame other people as well yeah and it's it's getting and hush worse. hush or i'll do yeah. this yeah. yeah it's getting it's getting worse and it's becoming normal and the thing is it's not normal no it is not normal but it's been oh yeah another photo was sent around within our schools and things like that and oh well you know and it's like well mm -mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. hold on we all need to take responsibility here whether you know whether you're a professional or not is we all need to take responsibility and take a strong stance mm -hmm. on rape and sexual abuse mm -hmm. which also means images and videos and things like that you know we can only do so much as our on our own, it, it yeah. takes, as I say, a community come together. Hence why I'm constantly pushing for education and knowledge um, for those reasons. Is So to get it out there, get those conversations out there, but us always taking a stance um, because then there's consent as well. Oh, yeah, but you, you didn't scream no. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to scream no. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's another thing as well. Um, but same with our, our babies and our elderly as well. Sometimes people can't say no mm. for certain reasons and with any age, actually. And mm. it's that non-verbal stuff as well. Um, but going back to it's about always uh, the disclosure stuff about things getting taken seriously because it's it's very normal like oh well did that really affect you and mm. oh, was was that something oh you don't know and and not to downplay mm. a disclosure yeah the other part of that too and I heard this um, a few years ago is that um, when this person was being violated um, because that person enjoyed it in their own mind they didn't know whether or not it was. Did I give consent? Is this, was it really right because I liked it? Yes. <clears throat> so that's another, um, mm. and it's about our bodies responding to mm. it. But that is another guilt and a shame. Yeah. Is that, well, I didn't want it to happen, but yeah. I also enjoyed it. And it's yeah. about that person understanding our body re um, reacts mm. to touch. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and yeah, that's very interesting because that's come up. Um, 
uh, a couple of times over the years, especially in trials, mm. um, if there's court yeah. cases, about that. And um, and it's about, as I said, they need to un- people need to understand it's okay to understand that. And and once again, that's that person putting that guilt and shame onto mm. that other person. Mm. Hence why it's taken really seriously as well, um, mm. because people have to live, live with that stuff. Yeah for all their lives. Yeah. yeah. Michelle, could I get you to do one more thing for me? <coughs> mm-hmm. Because the time is getting on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Could you just tell our listeners um, where you are and your number again? Oh, yes. So they we, want to contact you. Yes. We are on the fl- third floor of the departmental building, which is, uh, I think everyone knows the, the building. The skyscraper? <laughs> yeah, the skyscraper the, behind the library next to the subway. <laughs> so we're on the third floor. Um, we... Um, are contactable <coughs> by our 0800 number. We have a landline number. I'm terrible. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. Is it on there? Oh, it's not, but we're always diverted number. to that. It's always um, diverted to that. So 0800 614 614, that's our direct free calling number. Mm. Um, I always say to people, if it's not answered, to leave a message. We always get back to it. It's like I say, it's to us. It's not a call centre. Mm. Um our office is not signposted um, for obvious reasons. However, our logo is on our <laughs> door. Um, and, yeah, you know, our service is there for anybody and everybody, mm. even people who are just ringing up and say, hey, I want some advice. And, and people do. I have doctors. I have professionals. I have yeah, everyday people, aunties, uncles, cousins, yeah. you know, and that's what I want. I want mm. people to be able to contact us when they need to. No question is a silly question. Mm. And it's about, um, you know, if I can give give some advice or some understanding around something, then mm. I, I've, you know. A shed burden. Yeah, that's right. I've, I've done something for somebody. Mm. As, as little as that can be a massive thing for mm. somebody. Yeah. So if this, um, <coughs> excuse me, if this conversation this morning has um, triggered you in any way, okay, please, mm. Um, please call um, the 0800 number that uh, Michelle just said, 614-614? Yeah. Okay, um, even if you think that, I don't really, should I? If you have that doubt, call. Absolutely. Okay, call. So if you've been triggered in any way, please contact someone or please go and talk to someone or go go and see a professional. Okay, there is changeability there. Uh, there is um, Lisa's, uh, Michelle's service. There's age concern. There's your doctor. Yes. Okay, there is your doctor. So these are some of the, um, the organisations, the agencies that can help you. If I said, as I said, if you feel triggered in any way for this morning's conversation, don't um, feel that you can't because it's just a phone call away. Michelle, thank you for today. I know you've got yeah. a meeting to go to. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> what is <it>? That's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. And you're right, exactly. It's about anybody. Talk mm. to anybody, even if it's somebody on behalf of you, to go and get that advice if you're too scared to pick that phone yes. up at first. That's the most important thing mm. is, yeah. is there are services out there and um, professionals out there because also I just want to add on that that sometimes sharing your information with your loved one or someone you're close to is it's quite hard on them and sometimes people have to remember Mm. even though they're like I want to support them as much as I can is that sometimes it's really heavy hard stuff for them to carry Mm. and that they also may need to get some professional support too and and it's so that person can get the right advice um, because there are times where people feel they're doing the right thing and they're doing a bit more damage than what they from the advice that yep. they are giving because <clears throat> yeah. um, it's really important to get that also that professional advice mm. as well but thank you so much yeah. for having me thank you very much thank Michelle. You for coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming um anytime, <laughs> anytime you're good now, now. you're good I mean, now yeah, yeah, like a please have a look at the podcast when you and some free time it's on our website oh, nice. uh, but yeah so it'd be interesting to see uh, how you react to your reactions <laughs> oh yes it will and professional hand on um, yeah but any questions on that just yeah you're yeah. more than welcome all right. Contact cool. me. Thank you. Cool. Have a lovely morning. You yeah. too, Michelle. You too. Have a lovely Monday. <laughs> yes, it's Monday. It's Monday. Monday. Nice Thank to you. see you. Yes, yeah. you too. Take care. See ya. See ya. Right. One of the um, other interesting activities that happened last week, because last week was Matariki, while the Friday was the holiday, Matariki, um, but the um, opening of Te Whare Te 
tai ao o manikura uh, happened at Pukaha last week. And so that is awesome for Rangitane um, because I know that um, Kora Jimmy, uh, Rimene, he had a vision of Moi Moi uh, many years ago and that has finally come to pass. And the weekend, as I said, the opening of the Marae at Pukaha. Uh, amazing. So if you... It's open to businesses. I, I think during the day uh, there's room for. I'm going to say 100. I think it's 200. Um, there's uh, a really good kitchen there, a ki uh, cooking facility. Um, there are, I think, up to 40 can sleep there during the night, and you can have tours, uh, morning tours, uh, dawn tours, or night tours. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, their facility is for everyone. Um, you can hire it during the day or certain parts of the day. You can get a person to come in. They'll have a guide come in and talk to you about Puka. And I'll tell you what, um, one of the guides I had the pleasure of um, being with, her name is Evelyn Chase and her husband Warren. She's absolutely awesome. She has so much knowledge around um, Puka and the plants there. Absolutely awesome. So please do go out and have a look at our, our Taonga, uh, Pukaha National Wildlife Museum of Aotearoa. Uh, you will be amazed. The carvings, and I have to take my hat off to the carvers. Um, I only know two of them. There's more than two, but I only know two. Tipene um, Kawana and Kaurungunui. Um, well done to both of you. I take my hat off to you um, as I would say that you are Tohunga in um, Whakairo. And so, yeah, big ups to you cousins. I'm here to Kia Kōrua. Anyway, and what about other um, Matariki celebrations? Would you like to tell <coughs> about the one that we had on Wednesday? On Wednesday? Yeah. <coughs> um, I'll try and remember what was Wednesday. Yes, of course I do remember. We had an amazing um, uh, Weaver come and uh, talk a little bit about Matariki. Um, we had, uh, for Age Concern, it was at the Red Star Club Rooms. And we had your beautiful kai soup and buns and <clears throat> lots of lots of laughter. And afterwards we did Date the Master Carver, whose name is... Master Weaver? Master Weaver, sorry. How many money hit money hitter? Yep. Yeah. And his wife, <laughs> One of your Naomi. rallies. <laughs> Naomi, of course, is, is Anthony's daughter. Yep. Um, and it was lovely to meet her because I've heard so much about her and and lovely husband. And yeah, we did some fun weaving afterwards, which was really awesome, having everything explained to us and um, understanding that it's um, such um, su there's such a lot of history and um, to learn all those. Uh, reasons why things were made and looking after our uh, flora environment. Yeah, environment was amazing yeah. so that was great I still have my little uh, headband yeah my little headband it's looking a bit sad but learning how to do that was pretty cool too because it's nice working with your hands and having conversations while you're doing that as well um, yeah it was it was awesome I felt quite relaxed afterwards <laughs> uh, it was awesome yeah, yeah. Uh, we did a bit of singing a little mm. bit of um, Action songs by another relative of Anthony's. <laughs> it was a lovely, lovely day. No pressure um, and, yeah, very therapeutic yeah. doing the weaving. I had the opportunity to go and have a um, hotapu with Pathways on the uh, Friday morning. Uh, it was it was really, really nice. We got together, did a karakia and... Um, Dr. Rangi Matamua had, had a book of, and had karakia for each of the stars. And then what we did after we did that was um, the karakia for each of the stars. We had a pot on the um, the fire. And in it, it was, there was um, a chicken, eel, uh, a kumara, chicken eel, kumara, a mussel, a white tea, um, the star white tea is um, things of the star for things of um, fresh water, so that was what the eel was. White tart, things of um, salt water, and so that was the mussel was uh, tupu anuku, um, as um, fruits from the ground, so that was the kumara, and tupu arangi. Um, things of the ear, or they could be fruit or they could be fowl of the ear, so that's what the chicken was. 
and um, with um, Puhutukawa, that's the star in relation to um, those that you've lost over the past year, or those that you've lost. So what what happened was that um, when we did the karakia, all the stars, we opened up, it was a pressure cooker, we opened up and all the steam from um, the pressure cooker was a symbol of all those um, flavours going back up to the stars and feeding them. Mm. So it was a really good um, good day. So thank you for uh, Pathways to allow me to be a part of that celebration, the Masariki celebration, and I'll look forward to next year's one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I watched quite a bit of it on TV on Friday, which was great, mainly based um, at Rotorua, but um, uh, around the um, the giving of food, was I've never I've never understood that, or never has had ex, you know been explained, but. Yeah, it was very interesting. Um, yeah, and so many other cultures celebrate this time of the year for their new year. Yes, they do. They yeah, do. So the winter sol solstice. Yeah, mm. which is great. Yeah, mm. so um, thank you for Dr. Rangi uh, Matamua for uh, pushing, driving to have Matariki as part of a holiday for Aotearoa. And mm. I know throughout the schools um, that a lot of uh, Tamariki, Mokopuna, are learning about Matariki, so it's become um, a, a part of our culture now. Mm. Yeah, so that is that is great. That is great, and especially when they sing their song, Waiti, Waita, Waipunarangi, Tupua Nuku, Tupua Rangi. <laughs> That's great to see the, the young ones doing that yeah. Yeah, around the street. It was fantastic. <laughs> anyway, uh, some of the, um, the activities that we've got coming up, Susan, coffee mornings and stuff? Um, yeah, so hopefully um, people have received our new magazine by now, so all of the up-to-date times and everything are here. Marston Coffee Morning is now Tuesday fortnightly held at um, Sowai Showgrounds, which is fabulous. Uh, there are lots, lots of extra things going on there and, and it's more interactive, so uh, that's that's a lot uh, more rewarding, I think. You get a lot more out of it. Sometimes if you <clears throat> don't put things, if you don't put effort into stuff, you don't really feel much feedback. But um, yeah, when you're doing all those activities, you feel far much more mentally happy and um, achieving things too. I think it's good to know that you are part of something. Uh, Martin Burroughs, first Wednesday of the month uh, at the St Andrew's Anglican Church in Dublin Street at 10 o'clock. The Masterton one, sorry, is um, at 10 o'clock as well. Featherston, second Wednesday of the month, the Featherston Community Centre, which is a fabulous place. It's really buzzing down there. So um, come along at 10.30, that's in Wakefield Street. Uh, Carterton, third Wednesday of the month at the Baptist Church, um, 112 Broadway at uh, 10 o'clock. So Ginny, of course, is making a lot of effort around um, getting people enthusiastic about coming and um, yeah, contributing and, and enjoying themselves at those coffee mornings. So yes, we've had the matar Matariki and <coughs> August, excuse me, I have a Monday morning uh, throat. Um, the Planetarium Experience and Space Talk is on Wednesday the 30th of August, um, so that includes lunch. Um, and, yeah, contact us at uh, Age Concern Wairarapa. And you can also find all this information on our fabulous website as well, mm. um, <clears throat> which is great. Yeah. So the last thing um, for me today would be um, last... Well, I think it was last year. By now it is. Uh, we had the um, Rugby World Cup for the women's, but starting, I think, um, on the 20th, is the Soccer World Cup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here in Aotearoa. So go mm. out there, everyone. Support the White Ferns, the female White Ferns. It's going to be a great day. There is a game for those on... I'm going to see a game on Friday, uh, Friday night, uh, because the train comes back at half past 10. Oh, okay. So I'm taking my grandson over on the train at the 3.38 and then coming, seeing the game, then coming back on the train wow. um, that night. And so, yeah, go um, the White Ferns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone else, uh, have a great day, have a great week, and um, have a great new year. Yeah. Hey, Kornada. Hey, Kornada.